What if I told you that you could make bath bombs at home using simple ingredients and a mold? Let's do it. For ingredients, you'll need baking soda, cornstarch, Epsom salt, citric acid, coconut oil, and water. If you want, you can include mica powder for color and essential oils for a scent. Whatever optional colors and fragrances you use, you'll want to make sure that it's safe for your skin. I'll include the links to the all the materials that I used, including the bath bomb molds, in the description of this video. For equipment, you'll want a mold to make your bath bomb shapes. I bought these ones on Amazon and they were pretty cheap. They do seem easy to dent. You can see here that the one on the end was dented in the mail. However, it seemed to do the trick, so if you're just dipping your toes into the world of bath bombs, it seems like a good place to start. This recipe is just a starter recipe. Once you've gotten this one down pat, you can experiment around with adding different materials to it, such as like maybe oatmeal or something like that, depending on what kind of bath bomb you do. But just keep in mind that as you add ingredients, you might have to adjust the other ones. So play around with it, see what works, and let me know in the comments if you come up with a really cool combo. I'd love to hear about it. You'll also need mixing bowls, a whisk, a variety of measuring cups and spoons, a sieve or a fine mesh strainer. You'll probably also want some paper towels around just in case you make a mess. There might be a bath bomb in your workspace. First, let's mix the dry ingredients together. We're gonna mix half a cup of Epsom salt, half a cup of citric acid, half a cup of cornstarch, one cup of baking soda and one teaspoon of mica since some of these ingredients like to clump for the clumpier ones i put it through the sieve so if you've never used the sieve before you can basically just pour your powdery ingredients into the sieve and then use your whisk to break up any clumps and push it through the mesh when you whisk this together you're going to want to whisk it thoroughly you want to make sure that all the ingredients are evenly spread out throughout the whole thing so if you only do a little short one you're like i'm done you're probably not done. Do it a little longer, just to be sure. Next, we're gonna do the wet ingredients. For the coconut oil, it needs to be melted. We just put it through my microwave a few times. I think I did it for about 40 seconds total, but I just did like 10 seconds at a time just to make sure that it wasn't gonna get, you know, cooked. Melt two and a half tablespoons of coconut oil in your microwave. Mix the coconut oil, three quarters of a tablespoon of water, and 12 or so drops of essential oil, and you'll be good to go. Next up, we're gonna be mixing the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. So we can't get crazy here. We don't just dump the whole thing in. You're gonna just have your bath bombs explode together because basically the moisture is gonna react right away. So you have to mix in a tiny bit at a time. You'll see in this video footage that sometimes I got a little bit risky and I was like, oh, I'll just put a little more so it saves some time. Not worth it. Just do a little at a time. Take your time here. Mix it all together. It'll kind of be like when you're baking a cake and sometimes you mix the ingredients together. And you're like, oh, this is never going to mix together. There's not enough moisture here to mix it together. Believe me, this ratio that we have here is going to mix together. You just have to keep going for it. So this might take a little bit of time, but keep going. You've got this. So at this point, the powdery mixture is looking good. Now it's time to put it into the molds. If you're making this for other people, you're probably going to want to wear gloves because it's, you know, I'm making it for myself and my family, so I didn't really worry about it too much. Um, I just dove right in there with my hands, but basically you're just clumping it together. If it doesn't seem like it's holding its shape, you might have not put enough water in, but you also don't want it too much water. What I like to do is I fill the mold and I'm patting it pretty thoroughly, but I'm not jam packing it. But over top, I want it to be filled over the halfway point with a little bit extra. Um, I like to powder it a little bit and then do the same for the other side. And you're clamping them together and squeezing really hard. So once you've got it together, you can rub off any excess that's coming out the side. If it's not clamping together enough, like you can't make them, you know, touch together. You may have put too much in the two sides. So just take a little bit out, try again. You can experiment with this. I mean, the worst thing that happens is you just take it out of the mold, put it back in your bowl, mix it up with your whisk again and try again. So now that you have a ball of bath bombs, what do we do with it? Do you take it out? Do you not take it out? 
In a best case scenario, you probably wanna leave your bath bomb to sit for 24 hours. But if you're like me, you don't have an unlimited supply of the molds. So what I basically did, like I put them in the mold and then I pressed them together. Um, at first, I left my first one in the mold and then I moved on to my second one with the plan of basically cycling through my molds. And then once I've reached the end, I would take the first one out. But I was curious how well it was gonna hold together. So I ended up pulling the mold off early and I was impressed. It was actually staying together really nicely. So I just carefully took them off. If you're having trouble getting your mold off, you can use a spoon to hit the side of the mold just to kind of release it a little bit. If it does get stuck stuck, like it's not coming off or it's sticking, half your bath bomb is sticking to the inside, it may be that you have too much moisture in your bath bomb mixture. So you're gonna wanna leave these in a place to dry. You can leave some of them in the ha bottom half of the mold if you have extra molds lying around. And you'll wanna leave these for 24 to 48 hours. I've even read that you have like the optimal float capability for like when you actually put it in your bathtub if you wait a couple of weeks. Um, so if you have the counter space and you can leave them to sit, I've been, the ones behind me have been sitting here for a while, then do that. Otherwise, after 24 hours, you should be able to handle them. You don't wanna to touch them too much because they have the ability to crack if they're not completely set. So keep that in mind if you are having cracking. Speaking of cracking, if your ingredients are too dry, they might also crack apart. I've also read a tip online that if your mixture is too dry, you can get a mist bottle and just fill it up with a little bit of water. And that way you're not adding like a significant amount of moisture, but you're adding a little bit of moisture and see if that helps the consistency of your batch. When you remove the mold, you don't want to twist it. If you twist it, it's more liable to break apart and crumble. You want to be lifting it straight up. All right, so we have made the bath bombs. Now it's time to test it out. You probably noticed that there is a bowl sitting behind me with a bath bomb, just chilling out there. I hope it doesn't overflow. Um, yeah, I hope it doesn't overflow. <laughs> let's, let's go give it a try. So thank you so much for reaching the end of this craft core DIY video. If you enjoyed yourself here, please consider giving me a subscribe. Uh, you might see some other videos on my channel, such as my candle making DIY videos. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.